This is a Husqvarna 445. This is a um, this is a of course a 400 series saw. Um, you can see there it has the uh, the X torque. Um, you know this is a a good all around saw if you're going into a saw shop and you know you're looking for a saw that you're going to use occasionally to you know a couple times a month cutting firewood stuff like that um this is a perfect saw to start with you know um check out the 445 and then work your way up or down from there and there's several reasons why i say that you know a lot of people want to jump right away to the 455 rancher which is uh another um about two steps up from this saw here because you'd have the 450 uh, the 450 rancher and then the 455 rancher um you know not a whole lot of difference there between the 450 and 450 rancher that's why i say you got about two steps up from this one to the 455 but um this one's a good one to start with because it it's easy to start um it has a decompression valve right here so that makes um pulling the engine over a little bit easier than on say like a 435 or a 135 that doesn't have the compression valve and uh way easier than the 240 which is a lot less money but um higher compression and makes it a bugger to get started sometimes uh the other thing is this saw is pushing out about three horsepower so you're gonna get good power there it has decent torque because of course it is an x torque engine um you know, you got the, the purge bulb there, so you don't have to pull your guts out if it's been sitting on a shelf for a while. This one here, we're running the uh, the 18 inch bar on it, and this is still the old style chain that was made by Oregon for Husqvarna. Nowadays, you get one, um, depending on you know how new it is or what dealer you're buying it from, it might be labeled a, a 445. E series or an E right here because that's what the newer ones are going to, but um, it would it would more than likely come with the um, the newer style X cut chain on it. Um, <clears throat> they run 325 chain on these these 445s, so an 18 inch bar and uh, that 325 chain is a is a great combination on this saw. Um, it, again, this one is. It's about two pounds lighter than the 455. Um, you're going to get about three quarters or so of a horsepower less and just a little less torque out of this one. But at the same time, you're going to save a hundred bucks between this one and a 455 Rancher. So it makes this one a pretty good deal. Um, and it, basically the saws are built the same way. So longevity um they're gonna hold up about the same you know as long as you take care of them and and uh keep them maintained they're both gonna have about the same life expectancy so again this is a a, a great saw to start with if you're unsure of what you're looking for or what model would be a good one for you you know you start with the 445 take a look at it if if this feels good to you and you think okay i might be able to handle one it's a little bit heavier um, I got a little bit more money to spend. I'm going to be cutting, you know, firewood, um, you know, logs that are 22 to 24 inches round or something like that, you know, pretty regularly. Uh, you got some big trees, stuff like that. And yeah, you might want to jump up to that 455 Rancher. Um, if you're not going to be using the saw all that much and you're saying, hey, you know, 18 inch bar, I, I could really get away with a 16 inch for all the more I'm doing. Uh, again, this would be a good one, or you could drop down, you know, uh, 440 or a, a 435, somewhere in there. You're going to lose that decompression valve, um, so it won't be as easy to start, but you're going to save yourself some money, and uh, you'll still be getting a pretty decent saw. So, again, that makes this one the perfect starting point here for figuring out what saw is going to work best for you. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know what the uh what the deal is where most people think i've got to have something with a 20 inch bar i i can't do any less than a 20 inch bar um if you really wanted to you could run a 20 inch bar on this but the 18 inch bar is going to help this thing live a little bit longer because you're not going to be working it so hard uh 16 inch bar it's going to feel like it's got a world of power because it's going to be uh 
a shorter chain to spin. It's going to feel like it has just way more torque. Um, this 18 inch bar and chain combo, like I said, we used it and, uh, we were cutting through stuff that was uh, a little over 20 inches across and had no problems in it. You know, you, you figure if you're cutting something that big anyway, uh, even if you were cutting something that was 16 to 18 inches round, you know, even with this 18 inch bar, if the log's on the ground, you're going to cut down through it so far. And then you're not going to want to run your chain to the ground. So you're going to stop anyway. and You're going to roll the log over anyway and finish cutting it. Right. So, yeah, you got an 18 inch bar on here. The piece you're cutting is, you know, say 24 inches round or something like that. You're still going to roll it over. You're going to finish cutting it. So it's not a big deal um, to save yourself a little bit of money and, and go with the, uh, the smaller bar on a saw like this. If you follow what I'm saying there. Um, so back to the, uh, the whole starting procedure, you can see here on the sticker, it's got everything labeled out here. And, <clears throat> This is one where you push the primer. It says six times. You could actually push a little bit more than that if you wanted to because it's just going to keep circulating the fuel through there and uh, purge the air out. Um, pop the decompression valve down. You're going to pull this button here out. This is your, your choke and shut off switch all in one. You pull out on it, flip it up the choke, pull the rope um, once or twice, It'll sputter or maybe even start and then shut off. And you flip this down right there. That's run. Pull it again. It'll fire up and it'll be running at fast idle. And you just hit the trigger and it'll idle itself down. And to stop it, this is spring loaded. So you just push down on it. The engine cuts out and it automatically comes back to run. So you're not standing there just pulling your guts out and flooding the saw out because the switch is off. Um, pretty nice design that they have there. Now, when you go to start it when it's warm, uh, even though it's already warm, you can hit this purge bulb a couple times, get some cooler fuel circulated from the tank through there, and then you're still going to want to put this up to choke and just drop it back down to run and then pull the rope. Um, you don't want to pull it with the up to choke. What happens is when you flip this up to choke, it advances the timing on the, the ignition and um, makes this thing start a lot easier. Now, on this one here, this is a, an older one. This is a uh, actually a, a 2010. So, um, you know, it's got the, uh, of course, it's got the old style caps on it yet, which aren't bad. You know, they don't leak. They do their job. They're not as nice as the flip-up caps that you get on a, uh, a bigger saw. But, you know, um, again, like I said, they do the job. You have your, your carburetor adjustments in here, your high and low. Easy access to the air filter, so, um, you know, when it does come time to maintain it, real simple. Just take and pop these clips right here. Got three of them. And pull that off. Right here's your air filter. No tools needed to change it. Just move this spring out, and it comes right off there. Real simple. And then you can see your... Your decompression valve there, spark plug right there, real simple to get to. Um, ignition coil and everything down in there. Starter assembly comes off all in one piece. The, the screws are actually captured, so you don't have to worry about losing them. Um, again, just a really good all-around mid-size uh, chainsaw. All right, so this has what they call um, low vibe. You can see the, uh, the coil spring in there, and uh, it's got another one down here and uh there's a rubber mount here and there it takes a lot of the vibration out of this saw when you're running it so that's something really good too because then your your hands aren't just you know going numb from you know running this thing all day um they actually have legal limits on that in some of the countries over europe so husqvarna takes a lot of pride in having very low vibration out of their equipment um on this side here, you can see this has a single bar nut. There's another post behind there. So you only have to worry about tightening one nut. Um, if you go to take your chain off or do any adjustments, right here is the, uh, the screw to adjust the tension on your chain. Of course, it's got the inertia, inertia, inertia activated chain brake. Boy, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? So um, 
you know, you're using it, it kicks back. This handle pushes front, latches the chain brake on. All you gotta do is squeeze back on it, that releases it. You know, if you're if it kicks back, it will hit your wrist um, like this. Snap that on, your chain would stop instantly. So, good feature to have. That's a good feature to have on any saw. Behind here is a brake band that um, goes around the clutch, and that's what that's what stops this. And uh, what will happen is a lot of times people will go to take their chain off, and they don't realize that they have the brake set on. So whenever you go to adjust your chain or take your chain off, you always make sure the saw is not running and squeeze this back. Because if you've got to pry this cover off, that means your brake is on, your band is tight around your clutch, and that's why it's not coming off. And the last thing you want to be doing is prying on this to get it off. You don't want to go ripping the brake band out of there because that's a safety issue. And if you do manage to get this off with the brake engaged, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get it back on there. And a lot of people have a hard time figuring out how to get that brake band released once it's off here and away from the handle. So um, just do yourself a favor. Whenever you go to take the chain off, just give that a good pull back. Make sure your brake is released. Real simple to do. This is the crankcase from a 400 series chainsaw. This is actually from a, uh, a 440, um, but it's the same thing they use for the 445s, the 435s, the 135s, um, 450s, 455s. And you can see what they do here is they have these bushings, these metal bushings that are molded into the plastic crankcase. And then your bolts, um, the heads would be down here. They go up through and bolt right into your, your cylinder. And that cylinder just seals with a gasket right around here, as you can see, that that line there. That was from the the, uh, the gasket, the, uh, the seal for the cylinder. Um, so your bearings are riding on this plastic. You can see it's uh, pretty tight down there. As far as the the crankshaft area goes um but yeah all this here the oil tank everything it's just all it's all plastic um that's why these saws cost a little bit less than a a pro saw but don't let that fool you i mean these things do hold up very well uh you know like the the 445 we have here that's a nine-year-old saw and uh still runs like a champ um but it is a big difference when you compare that to something like this on a 562 XP. You can see that that is just, that is all magnesium. It's all, you know, metal the whole way around here. And up here in the front where you see this seam, there's, you can see there's actually a gasket there. So this is all, because it's a pro saw, it bolts together. You know, the two halves bolt together this way, as you can see the screw right there. And then the cylinder bolts, or the, yeah, the cylinder bolts down on top of it right here. So it's built a lot better. Um, going to get a longer life out of it. It's going to be able to take the abuse and the heat a lot better than something like this. Again, this won't do bad. Um, but you can tell it's definitely not built like a professional saw that's going to be used day in and day out over and over and over again um, it's just not going to survive the heat and the wear and tear but for the average person you know a farmer um, cutting some wood now and then um, some firewood stuff like that uh, great saw again you know this one here this one's a a 2010 and uh, here we are in 2019 and it's still running great running strong original cylinder um, the engine has really never had anything done to it other than just basic service. So don't let it fool you. Just wanted to show you there what the uh, the difference was between the, the pro saw and a, uh, a mid-range saw and why there's such a price difference there. And just to warn you, if you are going to look to do, um, you know, a lot of land clearing and stuff like that, and you're going to be sawing big stuff all the time, that's why you want to maybe jump up from this one to like a, uh, a 460 rancher, uh, or, you know, if you want a nice lightweight saw, one that weighs about as much as this, but has some good power and is built 
like that 562 XP, you might want to go with a 545, uh, 550 XP, somewhere in there. Um, again, you pick this one up, start with this one. If that weight feels good for you, um, then the, uh, the 545 and the 550 are going to be right around the same weight. They're going to be, you know, just a little bit faster than this saw, have a little bit more power. But they're going to come with a bigger price tag because they're built a little bit better like the uh, 562 XP we just showed you there. We'll show you how this one here runs. Uh, we did some cutting with this just recently and got some video of it. So we'll show you. Um, you have nothing to worry about with that 18-inch bar or uh, nothing to worry about as far as power with one of these 445s. <laughs> All right, so that was our look here at the Husqvarna 445. Again, the new ones uh, have a little E down here, 445E. They they run well. They have decent power and torque for their size. And uh, again, price plays a price plays a huge role in purchasing power equipment anymore. So if you're shopping by price, this is probably going to be uh, the one for you there too because um, 
again, it's a hundred bucks cheaper than a, a 455 and, uh, it's, it's not a terrible price for what you're getting in the package. So, all right, well, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, as always, if you like what you saw here, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, keep checking back because we're always putting out new material and uh, trying out new stuff. So we appreciate everybody that watches and comments, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon.